This episode of the BIC Magazine Weekly Industry Report is brought to you by The Prime Expo. On August 20th, 2024, in Pasadena, Texas, you can discover cutting-edge technologies and connect with industry leaders. To learn more about the Expo, visit www.theprimeexpo.com. Welcome to the BIC Magazine Weekly Industry Report, your go-to source for the latest updates in the energy sector. I'm Samantha, your AI podcast host, and today is June 28, 2024. In today's episode, the NTSB's findings on the cause of the East Palestine, Ohio train derailment, Heirloom's investment in Louisiana to build two direct air capture facilities, and other top news from the energy sector this week. But before we get started, I'd like to ask you to bear with me on my pronunciation. As an AI, I'm constantly learning, and because of this, I may mispronounce a word from time to time. With that being said, let's jump into the first story. To start things off, the National Transportation Safety Board has concluded that a defective wheel bearing on a rail car caused the derailment and hazardous material release in East Palestine, Ohio last year. The incident occurred on February 3, 2023, resulting from an overheated bearing on a hopper car. The NTSB highlighted the continued use of DOT-111 tank cars, known for their inadequate crashworthiness, as a significant factor in the severity of the hazardous materials release. The crew did not receive a hot bearing warning until it was too late, leading to the derailment of 38 rail cars, including 11 carrying hazardous materials. Additionally, the NTSB found that the decision to conduct a vent and burn of vinyl chloride monomer tank cars based on incomplete information from Norfolk Southern, was unnecessary. A full report will be released in the coming weeks, so stay tuned for any updates on new findings or additional information from the incident. For our next story, Ineos Olefins and Polymers USA and NextEra Energy Resources have broken ground on the Hickerson Solar Project, a new 310-megawatt solar installation located in Bosque County, Texas, about 48 miles northwest of Waco. This initiative follows a recent renewable power purchase agreement with NextEra, aimed at providing clean energy exclusively for INEOS ONP USA's manufacturing, fractionation, and storage facilities across the United States. Expected to generate 730,000 megawatt hours annually, the project aims to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions by approximately 310,000 tons per year. The INEOS Hickerson Solar Project scheduled for completion by December 2025, is just another example of INEOS's continued focus on renewable energy solutions in the petrochemical industry. Next up, we have a story out of Louisiana, as direct air capture provider Heirloom has announced that the company will build two direct air capture facilities in the northwestern part of the state. The first facility begins construction this year and will be operational by 2026, and the second, part of Project Cypress, begins in 2027. The projects are estimated to remove nearly 320,000 tons of carbon dioxide per year, and by partnering with CapturePoint, Heirloom ensures that the captured carbon will be safely stored underground. These new facilities will create around 1,000 construction and permanent clean energy jobs, boosting the local economy and advancing American net zero goals. We'll move on to a story out of my hometown, Houston, Texas, as ExxonMobil and Air Liquide have entered into an agreement to advance low-carbon hydrogen and ammonia production at ExxonMobil's Baytown facility. This partnership involves Air Liquide constructing and operating four large modular air separation units to supply essential gases using low-carbon electricity, thereby minimizing the project's carbon footprint. Notably, Air Liquide will facilitate the transportation of low-carbon hydrogen through its existing pipeline network, enhancing distribution efficiency. The initiative aims to foster a robust low-carbon hydrogen market along the U.S. Gulf Coast, supporting industrial decarbonization efforts and paving the way for broader adoption of sustainable energy solutions in the region. As we come to the end of this episode, we'll wrap things up with a story that might put a dent in your pockets. According to the EIA, this summer from June through August, residential customers in the U.S. can expect their monthly electricity bills to average around $173, slightly up from last year's number of $168. Warmer temperatures are anticipated to drive up electricity consumption, 
particularly in the southern states where air conditioning use is prevalent. While generation costs have eased with lower natural gas prices, transmission and distribution expenses continue to climb due to infrastructure investments supporting renewable energy. And with that, we come to a close on this week's episode of the BIC Magazine Weekly Industry Report. You can head over to BICMagazine.com to read the full stories discussed today, and make sure to follow us on all of our social media channels so that you never miss out on the latest developments, updates, and announcements from the energy sector. Have a great day, and remember, it's what we do together that counts. <laughs>